Hello, I'm back for day four of 10 days of Christmas. Okay, all that happy holiday, stay sane, eat healthy, all these healthy things to allow you to survive another year. Please start it now, don't wait till January 1st. No, time is like the present. You can do it even over the holidays, I promise you. Okay, so day four how to stay sane over the holidays. And this is always a work in progress, okay? Especially when you're on family. Please be nice to yourself. Learn to leave the room if you need to, <clears throat> okay? You have permission to take time for yourself if you need a break because you are what matters, right? Right? Okay, you can do this. All right, let's go back in. This is the hardest time of year, right? Hardest time of year. I would probably say for most people, you've got depression, you've got food cravings, you've got massive amount of food in front of you at work, uh, at home, holiday parties galore, alcohol consumption typically goes up. It is madhouse, right? And we all feel like we're failing all the time. But you're not, right? This only happens once a year. Thanksgiving's once a year, depending on what part of the world you're in, right? And then you've got uh, Halloween, which has got all the fun candy too. And then you've got uh, Christmas, right? And then all the Christmas stuff. But we're gonna talk about Christmas right now because we're past all that other stuff. We probably have gained a couple pounds at this point if you don't have those tools in place to get through this, unfortunately. But start today on making those healthy changes from the videos before so you don't continue to gain weight and develop an even worse relationship with food. So, how to stay sane over the holidays the best you can, okay? There, there's a strong tie of typically good memories, right? Good memories of being around the fireplace and cookies and uh, presents and all the lights and things like that. When I think about Christmas, I think about my grandma and when all of the family used to be together and there was, you know, vast amount of food that we would eat all day and the amount of alcohol that we would go through was just obscene, but we had so much fun. But we started to, after my grandmother passed away, that kind of just dissolved, but we ended up kind of carrying those same behaviors with us, right? When Christmas comes, you're thinking about the cookies and the alcohol and you know the things that just kind of make us feel like we're back into that place again. So that is a, a form of emotional eating. Even though it's, it's a positive, right? It comes from a place of feeling good and wanting to find that connection, connection again, but our mind is looking for what, how it found that path before. And in this case, it's like, oh, you know what? It's cold and crappy outside, depending on what state you live in. I mean, it's still kind of rainy and can be chilly here too. Nothing like Wisconsin where I used to live. But, you know, we like to look for those comfort foods that make us feel good because it brings back memories. That's still a form of an emotional eating pattern, okay? So it makes sense. If, if that's something that you want to change, we have to look at that. If that's something you don't want to change, then 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 it doesn't matter, right? You don't wanna change it. You can't actually, unless you actually wanna truly change something, it's never gonna happen. You actually have to truly want to do it, but not the way you are led to believe. <clears throat> not by giving up on all the things that you like. That is the wrong way of doing things, okay? So again, this is a hard time of year. Good emotions are coming up. Sometimes it's bad emotions. You know, maybe you lost somebody over the holidays, whatever it is. We're still looking at, as, as food and alcohol as comfort. It's ultimately what it's trying to fill the void of. So with emotional eating, we first need to be very aware of, of what we're actually searching for because it's not um, the, I mean, it's not essentially the food because the food is giving us something in return. It's a thought process that is happening, okay? Which is really confusing for some people. They think it's the actual food. But, you know, let's just say, you know, uh, Sugar cookies, right? Because they're really popular. Uh, sugar cookies were your favorite thing in the world because you made them with your grandma and your mom and your you know, family members, but you got sick on them one year because maybe because of, of for the raw eggs or what, because you ate too much cookie dough. <laughs> I used to do that. I still do, love cookie dough. But then you, you know, spend the whole next day throwing up 
you're probably not going to want cookies anymore, at least for a while, a year or two or whatnot. So that's because you've developed a different relationship with that food because of the way you're thinking about it. You're thinking about it making you sick. So you, you have a thought process. You're thinking about how it made you sick. You, you don't even have to have the cookie in front of you, right? And then it evokes that feeling of like either joy or vomit, right? But the cookie's not even in front of you, right? So this is why it's so real. The cookie's not there, but you're thinking about the cookie and you're either really happy or you're gonna throw up. And then it leads you to an action. So you either choose to eat the cookie or you don't choose to eat the cookie. So this is why it's a behavior loop. It just starts with the thought process. Okay, it all starts at the beginning there. It's not actually the food. Yes, there's a chemical component to it because we are wired to want that. <clears throat> I mean, we are chemical beings, but we can control that by changing the way we think about it, okay? Again, setting boundaries. This is one of the hardest things to do that I also work with my clients on because if you're a people pleaser, you likely have the all or nothing attitude and the go, 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 go. You're always doing something for somebody else at your expense. This will not serve you in the long run. And just learning to say no, just a little bit, just a little bit. Feel inside you what that feels like. Do you want to do it because you want to do it? Or do you want to do it because you feel obligated to do it? So that's question number one. And then if you feel obligated to do it, instead of actually wanting to do it, ask yourself why. And then see if there's some sort of happy medium that you can make there, right? Some compromise. It's not going to change overnight. It never does. And it's going to feel a little icky and a little strange. And that's normal. Okay? You're going to have to go through that in order to break through that wall that you have. And that's okay. But the more we learn to say no about something, and the more we're like, actually address our own needs, freedom, freedom comes. And it is amazing. And then everybody else, surprisingly, ends up respecting you more. Or you could lose some friends, yes. But that's okay because they weren't your friends to begin with. They were probably the users and abusers that are in your life. Food for thought here, right? If they're not going to support you, if you're having a, an adult conversation about the needs that you need, then they're probably not good for you to be in your life. And yes, it's hard to do around family 100%. <laughs> you can still set boundaries around going to events. You can still set boundaries. Maybe you end up showing up for two hours instead of staying for six, or you know you bring a, a different type of dish depending on what's going on. Um, <clears throat> when things get maybe get a little bit heated or you're feeling a little bit uncomfortable because you are in this situation um, that you are in, that you have chosen to be in because you're in a compromise, um, walk away. You can still walk away and go into another room take a long bathroom trip, right? Just find some ways to find some inner peace and deep breathing and center yourself again. Because the last thing you want to do, right, is just let it ruin your entire day. Because all you're thinking about is, well, they should be doing this. They should understand me about this. They should, they should. How come they can't? How come they don't? I wish there was a way to fix that, but that means we have to learn to fix somebody else right? Oh my God, I wish we could learn to fix somebody else. I wish it was possible. You could just wave a little magic wand and they did everything that you wanted them to do. But that's not how it works because we're human beings with our own past and our own opinions and our own ideas and our own passions. And we can't change other people unless they want to change, right? That's the key. But in that instance, like in holidays and events, they're not going to change. They're not being open-minded right then. People have to be open-minded for them to want to change. So be graceful with yourself. Find ways that you can find some peace and quiet. Find your boundaries. Find middle ground with your family members. Um, or, you know, if it's a food-related thing, see if you can bring something healthy uh, to kind of counteract that. Because I know a lot of there's, you know, family traditions may, may not feel very um, good for you, but you want to honor the family traditions because it's part of your it's part of your heritage and your traditions, right? But that's also somebody else's story and somebody else's past. So if you, you can choose to carry that on or you can choose to do what feels better for your body, nobody says that we have to do something because we're Norwegian or we're German <clears throat> or we're Jewish or we're whatever. 
nobody's making us do it. We still ultimately have the choice to make that decision. And yes, it might ruffle some feathers, but who is going to live with that decision for the rest of their life? You are. Your mind or your body is going to suffer because you bent into somebody else's beliefs and not your own. So hold your truth, find middle ground, enjoy your holidays, and stay sane the best you can. All right. Anybody have already some coping mechanisms you'd like to share? Comment below. I would love to hear how people manage to uh, navigate the stress because it's always good for other people to see what is uh, the inner workings of family dynamics and things that happen with different cultures and societies. So comment below. Happy holidays. And tomorrow is day five. And that is going to be what the heck is eating normally? right? Until then, have a good day.